Good morning. This is episode 236 of Create, Share, Inspire podcast. I'm Kristen Omdahl, and we're here live in Southwest Florida at Vanderbilt Beach, waiting on the sun to rise over the buildings and the trees to the east. And this is the Gulf of Mexico behind me. It is a beautiful and mild morning. The colors are just glowing and beautiful. I've seen at least five dolphin. Nope. When I turned my head, I saw another one while I was talking. So I've actually seen six dolphin sightings so far this morning. Got three on camera for Instagram already. Uh, so if we don't get to see any here, you can see them over there. But fingers crossed, we see a few more. And this smooth water, oh, there's one coming this way. Okay, hopefully you'll see one in a minute. Hi, Frieza B. Hi, Grace, Raina, Lisa, Judy, Linda. Thank you for joining me live. Good morning, Christy and Nikki and Annie. DJ, good morning. Thanks, Lisa. This is um, my hat has the create. Um, sorry, the Project Kristen Cares logo embroidered on it, and I do sell those on my website. They all come in this pretty royal blue color um, with the hard bill, and then um, the logo is embroidered on there. I look laid back today. Well, yeah, it's probably the hat. The hat probably does that. Good morning, Miss Detroit. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Kim. Uh, funny story about my top. I am a sucker for cold shoulder top, and I've had this one for a long time. I bought it at Chico's on clearance a couple years ago, and it has a bleach stain on it. And um, I don't know <laughs> how you feel about this, but sometimes I pretend like something doesn't have a stain and say, well, Technically, I could have gotten it while I was wearing it and nobody will know the difference. I know it's really stupid. And so I'm wearing it this morning and telling you that story because I think what I need to do is replace it with one of the Amazon cold shoulder tops that I have, but get it in this color. I really need a denim blue top. I look like I'm a member of the NCIS team. That's funny. So it's just a navy blue loose tank top with the cold shoulder. I'm really light on t-shirts and tank tops and simple layering pieces right now so i need a few more colors so i've been looking in my amazon shop and there's a couple of shirts one has a cap sleeve on it one's a tank top and the other one's cold shoulder so i think i'm going to try to um, grab a couple of those in some colors that i think would be great for every day like a denim blue and a black KB covers with the permanent marker. Yeah, sometimes that works. And this one, I don't have a marker that was going to work with this one. So I've got a bleach stain right here. And it really needs to be a retired top. But um, I don't know why I felt like I had to wear it this morning anyway. Uh, yes, we're at Vanderbilt Beach this morning. Uh, it could be embroidered as well. Yes, this is true. Could be, could be, yep. It's a weird spot though, right on the side of my belly button. <laughs> You know, sometimes it depends on the spot too. Uh, you know what? I had parking here this morning. I lucked out. Now we're approaching the time of year when parking is going to be difficult at this beach. So on any given day, I'll be here, the raw juice bar, my favorite raw juice bar and my favorite coffee shop, which are both right across the street from Vanderbilt Beach. So until Bonita Beach clears up, we will probably be between these three spots. So fingers crossed on days when I can get parking here, right? You know, I could do a whole area where I'm not covering that one spot. That is a good point, Lily. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll keep put my thinking cap on about redoing this one. Uh, thanks, Anna Maria. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah, I love this top. I got it at Chico's a couple years ago. It was on clearance for like $12, and it, I got every color they had in my size that year. Um, and I've donated most of them at this point, but I've kept this one even though it has the bleach stain I love the color so much um, And after we started talking about the color wheel yesterday I'm wondering if this has some gray added to the blue. I think this ha is like Let's see and what did we call that? What do we call a color that has gray added to it? Here's our first quiz, right? Okay, so a recap I brought my old my color wheel from yesterday and I brought the second one Ooh, Audrey yes if you do a, if you get a bleach pen you can draw a design in clothes with bleach how awesome is that that would be a this top would be a good candidate for that that is a great idea so drawing a design 
in the shirt with a bleach pen. What you would need to do is separate the front and back really well. So I would probably put some cardboard boxes in between the front and back and maybe cover them in plastic too so that the bleach doesn't um, absorb through both layers. And you can draw anything then. That's a great idea. I might do that. Yep, that's what I needed to hear today. Thank you. I knew there was a reason why I couldn't get rid of this top. <laughs> Hi, Billick. Thanks for joining. Okay, so a um, recap of some of the definitions from yesterday on the big color wheel was hue is another name for the name of a color. Tint is the name of a color when it has white added to it. Tone is any color plus the addition of gray and shade is any color plus the addition of black. So I'm thinking that this is a tone of blue that has some gray added to it. So my second color wheel arrived in the mail last night and at first glance I was so disappointed because it's so much smaller than the first one that arrived. But once I got over my disappointment and took a look more closely, it does have information that this one doesn't have. So there's a little bit of overlap, right? I mean, it's gonna have those color definitions that we just talked about. It talks about the color names. It talks about uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, warm and cool colors. And so all of that is pretty similar to this one, which is important information should you decide to buy one, not both. But then it has some other information that is very interesting and different than the color wheel that we looked at yesterday. And if you didn't watch yesterday and you're interested in color theory, I highly recommend going back and watching episode 235 because we really went in depth on both sides of this color wheel and I thought today we'd go over some of the components of this one because there's information on here that we didn't get to with the other color wheel and things that I think are really interesting. So the beauty of having a color wheel is the fact that this, the colors in the centers are stay stationary and then the white wheel around it slides so that you can see and focus on certain colors at the same time, more specifically on this side see where it would just it won't show you everything it'll show you what you need to see so to go back to this side and what I wanted you to see on this side is that it shows you how to choose colors based on different theories so we've got our triad which is what I described as think about the um, the three prongs of a peace sign, right? It's the three equal distant triangle pieces like that. So for the triad, you would pick those three colors. And then there was the split complementary that we talked about yesterday as well, which would be taking a color and instead of choosing its contrast complementary color on the opposite side, you'd pick the adjacent color on either side. So this triangle will remind you to look at that no matter where the color wheel goes. So you could pick this color and then it's split complementary would be these two here. But the other component that's on this wheel that wasn't on the other wheel is the tetrad. Can you see that on there? It's going to be backwards on the screen, so just trust me that it says tetrad. And that's looking at four complementary colors that would be at either point of that rectangle. And you can slide the color wheel around and get four colors. So when you're looking to combine four colors in a project, which is something we do a lot in crochet Afghan motifs or in um, Nordic sweaters that have colorful yokes, four colors are pretty common then. And you would pick four, you could pick four colors like that. You know, pick a color that you know you want for sure. And then this might help you lean towards some colors if you're not sure what to pick. So I thought that was really helpful. And then on this side, it also shows you something that I think really helps you to understand the hue, tint, tone, and shade of a color. It's really small, Beatrice. I'm sure it is hard to focus. If you had one in your hands and you could look at yours while seeing what I'm doing, I'm sure it would make more sense. But on this side, what I wanted to show you is that for any given color, okay, we'll go to, let's start with red. 
it's going to show you what the addition of black does to that color. So this one, you slide it to red and it shows you this is what red looks like with black added to it. And then this one says this is what red looks like when white's added to it. And this one, this is what red looks like when blue's added to it. And this is what red looks like when yellow's added to it. And red looks like when red's added to it. And I thought that was really interesting. So you could take that to any color and it'll show you what happens when you add red or yellow or blue or white or black to any given color. It'll show you how that changes and any one of those goes together, right? Because they have that commonality of having that violet in it where any of these would actually blend really well if you wanted to do a monochromatic color. So lots and lots of different ways to, or lots of different avenues to explore when choosing color. Um, it might be helpful to buy either one of these so you can explore them further. It might be handy to keep this with you when you're yarn shopping or when you're trying to purge in your closet. It would be a great idea to figure out which things go together and which things could get donated. Great thing to keep in your purse when you're going clothes shopping or when you're going when you're deciding on what color beads to make to use for making jewelry or going to buy jewelry. Yeah, stripes are so popular right now and this would be a great way to figure out what colors you would like to go together because it's pretty obvious when you're looking at mixing colors which ones sing to you. And if you're completely overwhelmed with the idea, this would be a good idea for getting started. It doesn't mean that you can't pick colors on your own and it doesn't mean that picking colors on your own is wrong. Sometimes I think color theory is just a great way to introduce yourself to combining colors when you're overwhelmed. It's not the end all be all. This isn't, these aren't hard and fast rules. They're suggestions, right? And it, I feel like it's a great way to get started in building your confidence in color. What, does anybody have any questions right now? And I gotta say, after looking at both of these, I'm glad I have both. Um, I think they both have really unique and different information on them that I'm glad I have both. It's a great jumping off point, exactly, Frieza B. I don't want anyone to think that you have to pick colors off the wheel. I think that it's, a lot of us feel less than confident on color combinations until we have experience doing it. And I think it's overwhelming, especially when you have to make these guesses when you're not confident and spend money. Um, like how many times have you bought yarns and thought they went together and turns out you weren't happy with them, right? Or bought outfits and accessories and jewelry to go together and you're like, eh, I don't really like it now that I have it. Um, so when you're unsure, having a little information under your belt certainly helps. But I was curious to see if anybody else has any questions. They're both made out of cardboard, but a little bit flimsy, so I would be careful putting them in your purse. I would put them in something um, you know, in something more stable if you're going to keep it in your purse. Maybe in a sleeve with a laptop if, or a sleeve with a, uh, what do you call a tablet, if that's something that you leave the house with. I don't think there's any more questions about color. That's great. Oh, that's another thing, DJ. Store lighting and natural lighting are so different. Absolutely. That's another. So when that's the case, most stores have a window at the front of the store. This is what I recommend. Any chance you have, go as close to the front door as possible when looking at colors, especially when you're trying to combine colors. Um, department stores are probably the exception to this, but I can but most other stores have a, a, a window. And anytime you can go to the window, I would go to the window with your selections and put them together. And I think you'll be, uh, if you can look at a mirror and put colors up to your face near the front door, that would be even better. So if you have a friend with you, they could put up the uh, camera on your phone maybe. Oh, Nikki, I'm so glad you enjoyed this. Yeah, color theory is so interesting. 
Thanks, Kimberly. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's wonderful. Yeah, so any chance you get, go to some natural light in the store. There is a clear red piece of plastic for looking at colors, too. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll show you around the beach. There are definitely more people at the beach. Yeah, I have not worked on the blog post for uh, gemstone colors yet. We will, though. Okay, here's the beach to the north of us. And we have a handful of people, maybe a dozen or so that I can see, which is nice. We have one more uh, new turtle nest. Can you see that in front of the chairs? I noticed that the other day. The beach to the south of us is really quiet, so the north side is where it's at this morning. And then the water where we've seen some dolphin. Yeah, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. I think I see 13 people, and that's not including me. Yeah, the water and the sky is so beautiful this morning. So pretty. I don't see any dead fish here, nope. I don't see any here. Yeah, it is very calm here this morning. And the waves are still pretty small, but you can still hear them. Yep, not, I'm not suffering from bugs here either. No, no complaints here this morning. <laughs> That's a nice change. So quick book update. Uh, getting closer to the end of Handmade Gifts. A uh, few more projects to photograph. Everything else is laid out. Getting ready to send stuff to editors. And I'm thinking that I might want to pick a couple of people that would be interested to give it a final run through after the editors make it through the book. So if anybody is interested in doing that for me, uh, please email me at projectkristincares at gmail.com and if you're chosen I will send you a copy of the ebook to do a run through. Oh, Beatrice is having red tide warnings in Newfoundland. Sorry to hear that. So if anyone's interested in helping me on the editing front, um, you know, just doing a final run through, hopefully, please email me and uh, I will send you a copy of the finished book as a thank you. And you could also have credit in the book as well for being part of the editing team. So if anyone's interested in that, it's not for everybody, but if it's something that sounds exciting or interesting to you, please feel welcome to email me and we can discuss it. Because I think it would be helpful, especially with a project, a book that has this many projects in it. I think it's just gonna be hard for anybody to go over all of it. So, okay, Lisa, yeah, please email me if that sounds interesting to you. It's 80 projects, so it's going to be um, something that's challenging for a lot of people to focus on. So maybe it will even break it down a chapter for different people to look at. So um, yeah, it's not for everyone, Ann, but anybody that does think that that sounds like something they would enjoy helping with, I would love to hear from you, so uh, go ahead and send me an email. Otherwise, we will have more updates on the book coming soon, hopefully. Uh, I believe the crochet and knit chapters are going to be sent to uh, my first editor today, and I'm excited about that. I also have another, I found, let's see, so much going on with books, so much going on with publishing. <laughs> I've got like four books that are all in, four books that are truly in process with going to editors right now. And I gotta tell you, it's a lot on my brain, a lot. Um, but thank goodness that I have helpers and editors and definitely think I could use a few more sets of eyes though. So if anyone thinks that's interesting to them, that would be great to add a few more people to the team. Uh, regarding dyeing yarn, I'm at a standstill right now. My arm was better for a couple days and it's not today. So uh, probably going to take a couple more days on that. And I think I need to focus on handmade gifts right now. So close to finishing it that I just, I need to, I need to get this off my production plate and get it to editors. Um, 
Oh, Beatrice. Yeah, my, my worksheets are, my worksheets overwhelm me. <laughs> and uh, handmade gifts is really overwhelming me at the moment. It's, you know, it, it started out as something that seemed like it was going to be really simple. And I'm sorry, anytime you try to combine 80 anything together, 80 is a big number. And um, it's, it's really gotten overwhelming this week. I'm also, there's a few things going on in my personal life that are um, getting st extremely hard right now. And, you know, sometimes it's helpful to have really intense work projects going on so that you can dive into them and take a break emotionally from other things going on. And then sometimes I think everything just gets super overwhelming. So I think that's where all this muscle and nerve stuff coming from on my left side. Um, thanks, Lisa. Yeah. Um, so hospice is a daily conversation in my house again. Uh, for those of you that remember six months ago when my dad was, you know, really declining, we had a second family member that was sick at the same time. Well, that person's journey is headed towards hospice care right now and as of yesterday I just got another bit of news about a third person that's becoming seriously ill all in our like immediate small circle and it's just amazing that I mean we have such a small family to begin with and we're losing so many people this year that it's it's extremely overwhelming and as a single parent, it's so stressful to, um, I can't even imagine how scary Mar it is for Marlon. And um, and I can only do the best I can do. And it's just, and there's no way to be certain that I'm doing the right thing for him every second of every day, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just, it's so overwhelming. Uh, man, sorry to hear that, Miss Detroit. You know, part of me thinks that if I talk about it, all oh, this pain is going to go away too. Uh, I think that's why I'm having so much pain in my arm and my chest and my elbow. I think it's just stress. Yeah, so... I think that I just, I need to give up that control a little more and reach out and ask for help on my projects because it's just, I think my brain's turning a little mush. Part of me's in shock, part of me's just so sad, and part of me just wants to keep working. And I don't know what the heck to do regarding Marlon. <laughs> yeah, I think I need a massage for Isabi. I think that's exactly what I need. I just don't know when to fit it in time-wise right now. Thank you, Brenda. That's nice of you. Yeah, Judy, it is helpful. And, you know, it's helpful twofold to talk about things. It's helpful to get it out, but it's helpful because you never know who's listening, who's going through something and feels alone. So, yeah, Beatrice, I need to try to delegate. Now that I've got the production of things done I need to start I need to delegate and get things off my plate for pe other people to look at now it's that time and that's probably going to feel really good yeah sharing is a stress relief for sure yeah and I know I need time for myself I don't know how to fit that in right now thanks Sherry yep Kim that's what I'm trying to do Thanks, Kimberly. Yes, Lisa, I know I need time for myself. I'll get there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah, hugs are nice, huh? <sighs> Forget where I was going.
I know something else I wanted to ask you guys this morning. I hope so, Grace. I'm trying. Just trying. Marlon's got already so much on his plate, too, and I can't even imagine how scary this is for him. He's so much younger than me, you know? Yeah, thanks. Whoever said God will give you more than you can handle, thanks. You know, I know that for myself, but I need to constantly remind myself that that's the case for Marlon, too. And Margaret said kids are more resilient than you think. I need to remind myself that because I'm okay when he's around. It's when he's not around, like after I've dropped him off now this morning. Now I'm worried that I didn't do the right thing this morning or worried that I will forget to do the right thing tonight or worried that, you know, worried that he's not getting what he's needing. And you know what? It's gonna, it's gonna suck. It's gonna suck for him. And I have to let that go too. I have to know that I can't, I have to realize that I can't protect him from it. Lisa? Yes, I know, Sherry. I know I don't do anything perfectly, and that's okay. I, I'm confident that I do the best I can. That's something I've grown to understand as I've gotten older, is that I do do the best I can. Um, and I recognize what I haven't done well, and I recognize what I need to improve. <laughs> Perfection would be better. <laughs> Uh, okay, so on a lighter note, I've had some really exciting emails coming through lately of people contacting me because they want me to review their products. And, you know, I know I've seen things in social media over the years of people just, you know, hey, buy this because I get a kickback or buy this because someone gave it to me for free. And I don't believe in that at, at all. And I don't want to tell you guys, I don't even like to tell you when I've bought something and <laughs> I haven't used it a while. I don't even like to review things for you guys that way because I really only like to tell you something's good when I've really gotten a grasp of it and know that it's good. And I hope that that, because of the way I, re I think of things like that, I hope it allows you to trust me better than if I were to just willy-nilly tell you to do stuff like the Amazon shop and you know I enjoy being a savvy shopper so much and I enjoy really giving full reviews on stuff I've been doing this for friends and family for years I love being able to share what's good and what and stuff like that and what's not good and not even so much what's not good I just prefer not to talk about the, the bad stuff instead of do bad reviews there's enough negativity out there I'd rather just focus on the good stuff so a um, couple of companies have come to me recently and wanted to send me products to see what I thought of them and you guys I love them love 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 them so I've got a product to share with you guys it'll either be this week or next week um, someone sent me a lamp and okay a lamp okay whatever no 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 this is a, a floor lamp that has an LED super bright lamp on it that can move all around. It has a 175 magnifier on it. The thing that it reminds me of the most is something you'd see in an esthetician's office if you've ever gone for a facial. It's a lamp like that, but it's on wheels and can roll all over the house. It can go from your craft room, your sewing room, your bedroom, your living room, your kitchen, wherever, um, which means it would work for working with black yarn in front of the TV at night. Like, oh my God, that just opens up a whole new world of crafting in my opinion. Or let's say you're trying to thread a needle for your sewing machine or thread a needle for a beading project. Um, the magnifier is amazing. Well, the whole thing is just incredible and it's gonna run about $100. And I think, and it's replacing like my, my Ot light that recently broke, which had a super heavy base and was not mobile. So the fact that it's better than the lamp I had before and mobile and has the magnifying, I, the crafting possibilities are just unreal with this um, lamp. 
So I've used it for a while now and I'm loving it. So I'm going to do a review. It'll be, there'll be a video review and also, um, you know, a blog review with photos. Um, I absolutely love it. So I will be sharing that with you soon. So if you're in the market for that type of a product, I think it is absolutely well worth the hundred dollars. Oh, and it was easy to put together too. It took three steps to put together. Um, no tools required, super easy. Oh, it looks like we're almost out of time. And I'll tell you about the other product tomorrow then. So we're out of time. Thank you for, yes, it has an adjustable arm. That's the word I couldn't think of. <laughs> Thanks for listening to me today, guys. I appreciate it. Um, sorry for getting weepy. You know, that's life, though. There's ups and downs. And anybody else that's going through stuff like that, just remember that you're not the only one, okay? You're not alone. You're not the only one. Everybody's, no matter what someone's life looks like on social media, everybody has problems. Everyone cries and laughs. Everybody gets scared. Everybody feels lonely. Whatever you're going through, Everybody else is doing it too, regardless of whether their life looks better than yours or not. There's so much of that in social media and I hear about it so much. We are all more similar than we are different. Just remember that, okay? We're all more similar than we are different. So let's take this last minute here to look out at our amazing view, soak in the sounds of those waves, and set our intentions for the day. fishing over there earlier. Oh, they were? Yeah, so he probably oh, jumped the rest of his bait out. Oh, that yeah, must yeah, be the bait. Oh, that's gross. Yeah, because we out there for the fish to eat. No right? kidding. I wonder if they were already dead. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. No, so, it's just like someone littering, I guess. I know. I don't know. If the that's gross. The yeah, but someone was fishing when I got here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably that's what it is. That's my least favorite thing. I don't want people to fish where I am on the beach. <laughs> they should have their fishing area. Well, especially you uh, never know what they attract, Wood, right? In Eaglewood, you are literally on the beach here, and someone's fishing. So you have to cross over. You have to like. Oh, I know. It's it's yeah, dangerous. Yeah, that shouldn't be allowed. And they should put. Don't you realize you could get caught? You could get. They could catch you out there. Yeah, and they attract sharks too. So, huh? and they're attracting sharks and others. They allow those here. Though, right? Well, he, they and can't I control would, it. I live here, yeah. man. I'd start my campaign. Uh -huh. <laughs> you have to <laughs> All right, bye. If anybody has any questions about the color wheel or color theory, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. If you have questions about anything else, always feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. I reply to every comment every day. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day today to spend a few minutes with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise the beach, the sound of the waves, the dolphins chatting with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.